Good morning to you folks. We're glad you're here. You know, I always hope, you know, we all have different reasons why we come to church. Um, you know, for many years, I think folks have come for different reasons. I think we can come to church because um, it's just what we do. I think we can come to church because maybe a friend or a family invites us or we can come to church maybe because we're feeling bad and want to feel better about ourselves or maybe it gives us a sense of community and, and none of those things are inherently wrong but the main reason that you and I should be at church and God got you here, however he got you here, is to know him personally and to grow in your relationship with Jesus Christ. That's the main reason. The enemy just hates you and doesn't want you to hear what we're going to do right now, which is the word of God. And, and he wants you to just glaze over it. He wants you to just, ah, hear some nice speaking and forget about it. But not you. God wants to speak to you. He wants you to not only listen, hear, he wants you to listen. He wants you to hear it, to receive it, to live it. Because that's where the difference is made in your life. Times are tougher now, isn't this true? Than they've probably been, for most of us anyway, than we can probably remember. And if, I, if you guys knew what was going on in each other's lives, it's almost the over, it, overwhelming. But we have a God who gives us strength and stability and perseverance and perspective in a way like the world cannot ever know. We have a Savior, we have a Lord, and we have the King of Kings to guide us through this minefield of crisis that we're going through right now. So listen. If you have him as your Lord and Savior, you need to do what Miss Neely said and thank him, whether you're here today or you're at home, because you have a faith that is built on the rock, Christ Jesus, and the storms may come and the winds may blow and the rains and the waves, but that house will not fall in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Now, for those of you who are just here because however you got here, then you need to thank the Lord that God somehow finagled you to get here. And he has a message for you too that he wants you to hear because he wants you to live freely. He wants you to live a life that's not, I don't know, encapsulated by anger, bitterness, depression, lust, whatever it is. He wants to give you a life that's abundant in him. And so I just want to encourage you as we start, if your perspective is anything else, maybe it's even out of duty, whatever it is, you reorient your thoughts and your minds and you say, Lord Jesus, help me to hear what your Holy Spirit has to say from your precious, powerful word and let me receive it in my heart. Help Pastor Darren to speak it in power, just in your mind, in your heart, whether you're at home, or here, just pray that right now. Let's just take a second. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Amen. Thank you very much for praying. And thank you for praying with me. Well, we've got a few things to go over today. And first off, our goal is to equip the saints for the work of the ministry. You are the saints, and he wants you to be serving. That's why you're here. You're being trained up with the word of God so that you can go serve Jesus Christ, okay? Among your family, friends, neighbors. The first book, we have two books to give away. Uh, Lord, no. The first one I'm going to give away is this book right here. And I don't know who's doing the camera, but here's what it is. Mere Christianity. It's by C.S. Lewis. It's probably one of the most thought-provoking, powerful books that I have ever read. It's definitely in my top 10 or 20 books that I've read in my lifetime. Now, I'm also going to say that if you know C.S. Lewis, he's from Cambridge, this is not a light read, if you know what I'm saying. Okay, this is not an easy read. It will take you from... 
if you're thinking he'll take you from being an atheist to being uh, 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 a polytheist or a theist to a polytheist to a monotheist to Christian and then he'll take you into your Christian character and life it is probably one of the most rational, logical, but powerful books, philosophical, you'll ever read. But again, it's not an easy read, so I want to make that clear. If anyone at home would like this, just call the church cell number, give me your name, your telephone number, your address, we'll send it out to you. This church body is very generous, we'll do it as a gift for you, free, in Jesus' name, as long as we can afford, and uh, we will do that as a gift in Jesus' name. If anyone here would like a copy, I've got somebody who was just reading it, of Mere Christianity. All right, let's do that. Okay, you would like one? Okay, you'd like a few in the back? Okay. Can I say, they do have, I just looked it up and I have it reserved, but they do have it on audio through the library, if anybody has a library card. Okay, library card on audio too? Okay, yeah, let me grab a few of these books. Okay, who else? Okay, I just gave you one too, so we got a few. My gosh, we have so many. You have to read them. Do not take these books and not read them. Okay, yeah, who wants the book? Raise your hand again. All right, all right, we'll get you another. We'll have to get more. You want one too? All right, great. And uh, one, I, I got to see you in the back there. Okay, Daryl, would you do me a favor? That lovely young lady in the yellow in the back. Yeah, right, all the way in the back corner. All right, we'll get more next week. I didn't realize there'd be so many people who would want to take that challenge. And, uh, and so I'm already out of books. But I have more to give. But wait, there's more. We've been talking about spiritual warfare and what it looks like, what's going on around us in the unseen world. This Present Darkness by Frank Peretti, there's already three million copies sold. It gives a fantastic picture of what spiritual warfare is like. We keep handing it out, I handed it out last week and I ran out again. Same folks at home, if you would like this Present Darkness, we are absolutely happy to give it to you as a gift in Jesus' name. If there's anyone here who wants a copy? Rebecca, can I borrow you for a minute? Or Chris? Yeah, either one of you. Thank you. Okay, would you? Oh, thanks. It's all right. Too late. You lost. Okay. All right, now hand those out. And we got a few more, all right? And I don't know if we have enough again. All right? So we're out of books again. So we'll bring more next week. And again, this is for you to read and to be encouraged by. Also, I want to let you know, too, uh, if you guys have not seen this, anybody watch this on Netflix? Okay, yes. couple of you. Okay, so about uh, about half dozen, dozen. On YouTube, okay. So it's on YouTube or Netflix. Uh, I was uh, Jonathan Bachman, uh, Jonathan and Robbie Bachman do InterVarsity for the colleges here in our area, uh, Ringling and New College and USF, and uh, they came and spoke to the students, and they were so impressed with the kids here at Shepherd's Art Christian School. They were just, uh, they had some wonderful things to say. Anyway, one of the things he said was, man, I don't know, have if anybody checked out this on Netflix? Have you, it's really great, The Chosen. Now, there's, there's two movies on Netflix. One is called The Chosen One, okay, which is a horror film. You don't want that one, okay? <laughs> this will be about Jesus, okay? So it'll, it'll have like the Gospel of Mark, it, it, the Gospel of Luke, the Gospel of John, and it's, it's called a historical drama. It's actually quite good, and here's what we've been doing in our house. Before we turn on, okay, so we watch whatever it is, Jimmy Neutron or Star Trek or whatever, um, we, what we'll do is we'll watch some of this. We've been going through Luke, and it's really been good. And I really want to encourage you, and we even give a thumbs up for my 10-year-old. We got the double thumbs up. So I just want to encourage you, that's something to do. Give it a try and allow God to just, even if it's just for 30 minutes before you go on to whatever, do that first, because you know if you put it off, you're not going to do it, right? Do it first. All right. So now let's get into 1 John, as I think we got through almost an entire verse that's not even true. I think I got through four. That's really embarrassing. Uh, Mr. Lester did a great uh, a teaching last week, but I only got through about four words. So I'm a little embarrassed about that. So we're going to cruise right along. And uh, let's read it through first. And then we'll go through it verse by verse. Shall we? We're in 1 John. That's at the back of your Bible. 1 John chapter 2, starting in verse 18. Verse 18. It says, Dear children, this is the last hour. And as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come. 
This is how we know it's the last hour. They went out from us, but they did not really belong to us. For if they had belonged to us, they would have remained with us, but their going showed that none of them belonged to us. But you have an anointing or an unction from the Holy One, and you know the truth. I do not write to you because you do not know the truth, but, be, but because you do know it, and because no lie comes from the truth. Verse 22 says, Who is the liar? It is the man that denies that Jesus is the Christ. Such a man is Antichrist. He denies the Father and the Son. Verse 23 says, no one who denies the son has the father and whoever acknowledges the son has the father also. See that what you have heard from the beginning remains in you. If it does, you also will remain in the son and in the father. And this is what he promised us, even eternal life. Verse 26 and 27 says, I am writing you these things uh, writing, excuse me, these things to you about those who are trying to lead you astray. As for you, the anointing you receive from him remains in you. And you do not need anyone to teach you. But as his anointing teaches you about all things, and, is, and that anointing is real, not counterfeit, just as it is taught, remain in him. So the Apostle John is... Um, at the end of his life, and he's warning us uh, it, through this section here about Antichrist. And he starts off in verse 18, or he started off last week, he said, Dear children, and, uh, and he's trying to tell us, man, there's a lot of Antichrist, there's an Antichrist coming, an Antichrist, there's a spirit of Antichrist uh, that's going on in this world, because we battle not against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities. We know during these last times, and these last hours, that it's going to get dark. We talked about that last week. And the Holy Spirit clearly tells us in these last times, like we're in right now, that some will turn away from the faith and they will follow deceiving spirits and teachings that come from demons. Wow. We told you a couple of things as we're going through uh, these teachings. You can leave it on for now. We're, a couple of things that we told you about, just in case you don't know about Antichrist or Antichrists. Uh, Satan is in the deception business. He's the Satan of Starbucks. It's on every corner. He's got him franchised everywhere around the globe, and he's very popular. Everything he does is made to deceive you. And he started this business all the way back in Genesis, and it's just been growing in, in power and in severity and in populace up until now. And he's a liar. He's been that way from the beginning. We talked about that. That's number one. Number two, when Satan attacks or his demons or his antichrist, that spirit of antichrist comes, he's going to attack your thoughts, your thinking. He's going to attack your emotions, your heart. That's what he does, just like he did from the beginning. Your thoughts will be led astray by, this, by the deception, by his cunning. That's what he's always trying to do. So you, I, we have to learn not not to go by what we think or what we feel. We have to go by what God's word says. That has to be the authority. If that is not your authority, you will always be, the Bible says, washed or moved by every wind of doctrine here and there and everywhere. God doesn't want that for you. You will live an unstable life. You will lead an ungodly life and an unfruitful life. And God doesn't want that for you. So, again, Satan's in the deception and lying business. That's all he speaks. It's his native language. He attacks our mind and our hearts. So we have to know his word to combat that when it comes up in our mind or comes up in our heart. He's an imposter. <laughs> He masquerades himself as an angel of light, so it's not going to be that he's in the, the, the red jumpsuit with the tail. He's going to make that temptation or make that thing look kind of biblical, kind of right, but not really. Um, that's what he does. And his, his servants masquerade as servants of righteousness. Uh, but their end is going to be a terrible end uh, and what they deserve because they're going to be in hell because they've served the wrong Lord. And so... Uh, when we see dear children, this is the last hour, aura. And we talked about this when he's saying last hour 2,000 years ago. That aura can mean time, like he, literally an hour. Or it could mean a fixed point in time or a fixed season of time. And that's what he's talking about here. S 
And, and we showed you some things about how Jesus, it says, wishing this hour might pass at his crucifixion. He didn't mean a literal hour. He meant the end of things, the end when he was going to the cross. Just like he's, they're speaking of the end here. We talked about a lot of us need to wake up from our slumber. We're sleeping because our salvation is nearer than it has ever been before. Times are coming to an end. We talked about all of the Old Testament history is pointing forward to the Messiah, to Jesus. And now that Jesus has come and he's died for our sins and rose again from the dead, this is the last time. This is the last hour. This is the last season that we're living in. And it's just going to increase uh, the evil and the darkness in these last minutes, if you will. We talked about how we should be living, looking for his glorious appearing. And hopefully if you've been, if you get my texts, if you don't, let me know if you're part of this church uh, online or here. We send them to you, I send them to you every day so that you can be encouraged in the Lord. We need to be eagerly waiting for him, okay? Because he's coming soon. Now look at me with verse 18. It says, dear children, this is the last hour. And as you have heard, the Antichrist singular, right? You see that? So that's, is coming. That means a future person, an antichrist is coming. That's set for the future. Then verse 18 says, even now many antichrists, plural, do you see that? Have come. That means that there are those servants, those spirits, those people who deny Jesus Christ uh, have gone from there, from Jesus' time or from John's time, all the way till now. So that word antichrist, and we'll start there. That antichrist means, anti means like against or opposed to. And it could mean opposite of or in place of. So when John's telling us, hey, you've heard the antichrist is coming. Okay, we can kind of get in, the, in our mind, it's, it's, it's going to be opposed to Jesus Christ. Okay, he's going to be against him. But we kind of get in our mind, and I don't know if you notice this, but like when I think of the Antichrist or what I used to, I'd be like, Pastor Darren, I've seen the movies. I know what the Antichrist is going to be like. He's going to have this ominous darkness in the background, right? And he's going to have red sort of glowing, crackling eyes. You know, his name's going to be Franco Macaluso. Or Nicholas Carpathia, if you remember that Left Behind series. You know, Pastor D, I understand he's going to have real sharp teeth, incisors, you know, and he's just going to have this uh, growly voice. I, I understand. That's the Antichrist. And, and what I want you to understand, and when it says Antichrist, and we're thinking opposite, anti can mean opposite of or in place of. What we're talking about here, and what he's talking about here is in place of. He's going to be against, he's going to be opposed to Jesus Christ, but it's in place of. He's not going to necessarily look like the bad, evil guy. In fact, just the opposite of that. He's going to look like a fantastic guy, like a peacemaker, like a celebrity, like a superstar. Okay? The Antichrist will be a word, just because uh, some people don't know about this, some people do. The Antichrist is going to be a world leader. He's going to direct humanity in what seems to be kind of like a golden age. He's going to kind of like be a savior of the world and uh, until he shows his true colors. Now, when he shows his true colors and the judgment of God is poured out on him and his empire, that's what's going to happen then. And that's all going to happen immediately before the return of Jesus, okay? So when we're talking about the Antichrist singular, this is what we're talking about. I, I put in that he's a political leader, and I don't know for sure if that's true, but he'll have some sort of, I didn't know if I should put world leader, or, but he's going to be some sort of leader, I'll say political, okay? And he's going to organize a world-controlling or a world-influencing group of nations. And eventually and ultimately, you will be forced to take a mark on your right hand or on your forehead and you won't be able to go anywhere, <laughs> buy anything or sell anything without that mark. They call it the mark of the beast. Even now, pastor, I find that very difficult to believe. We live in America, you know, 
How could that ever happen? You know what? Even two years ago, to be honest with you, I, I would be thinking that same thing. But you know what? I mean, there are places right now, right now, just think about this, because of the uh, pandemic. Sorry, I shouldn't have said that. Because of the pandemic, I shouldn't have said that. Because of the pandemic, that you can't go into some stores. Do you notice that? They won't allow you in. Even in Florida, which is swings very much on the other side, okay? We're very free here in Florida. I was listening to a guy in, in England. He says, my kids haven't been outside, haven't seen their friends in six months. It, it, it's, we're legally only allowed to go outside one hour a day. No shop is open. In that one hour a day, you have to use it to buy food or toilet paper. Okay, and if you talk to other people in other states, the lockdown is, is, is much more severe. So you can't even go into some places unless you have a mask. Yeah. Isn't that weird? So, I mean, I understand why they're doing it, but for those of you who think, oh, I can't, how can I not buy or sell anything without... Pastor Gary is going to be going to see his son get married. Is that correct? <laughs> Very exciting time. So in order to do that, uh, if I understood it correctly... The airlines are forcing you to, you have to get vaccinated. They haven't said that, but he's up in Michigan and I didn't want to take it. Okay, okay. But I think, to be honest, we're heading in that direction. Interesting, don't you think? So when I see some of these things, I, I'm not surprised now by it at all. It's even now, national leaders, and they speak of a new world order or a global community. Okay, you guys might have heard these terms, right? I, 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 listen, say what you want about, you know, Trump the man, but I tell you, one thing I do like was his policy. He wasn't super happy about the UN and us becoming part of this global community, right? I, I, I appreciated that. But I think this, this leader is going to be pushing us into that global community. And if we don't, get along with what they say, we will not just be outcasts, we will be uh, punished, I'll say that. But the bottom line is, well, ultimately, yes, ultimately, I heard somebody say exterminated, yes, ultimately, um, that is what will happen. You'll be forced to take a mark, and that's in Revelation 13. He'll also have a cult of personality, and, and I, this, this person will have surrounding him people that are totally devoted to them and their mission. Uh, even now in America, I, I put, we have kind of a worship of celebrities, don't we? Or of political leaders. Isn't that true? Listen, now, I'm going to have everybody hate me by the end of this. And so you guys can get, get ready at home. <laughs> Uh, so I'm going to hit both sides, okay? So uh, depending on what side of the political fence you're on, I'm going to say something about both, okay? Now, I, I mean, I, you look at celebrities. Uh, you look at people who have the most Twitter or the most, you know, followers, right? They're, they're, ce they're, they're celebrities. They almost, if an, a celebrity likes this particular brand, it takes off. Right? Or it likes it. it it's kind of crazy. So he's going to be having this cult of personality or, or a political leader and have this. Listen, you know, I know people, let's just be honest, okay, if on, on, on the one side of the fence with the President Biden that we have now. Uh, and if you, listen, I, just so you know, I'm not into political parties. I'm into Jesus. Amen. Okay? I will side with whatever political party best honors Jesus, and I have no problem with doing that, and best adheres to biblical guidelines. They're worldly institutions, but whatever best supports biblical guidelines is usually where I'll lean. Okay, so here we go. Folks, I know Christians that, that, um, uh, that, that basically put aside their convictions on what the Bible says, whether it be... Uh, if you've watched uh, this, this current president, uh, and again, our job is to pray for him as Christians. Uh, he is the most uh, anti-pro-life president and immediately started uh, So most pro-abortion president I, I have ever seen with executive orders going back and the killings of life and babies around the world. It, it's, it's terrible things. S such a, a, a pro uh, homosexual and lesbian agenda. They just, the House just, pilled a, uh, just passed a bill 
uh, that basically uh, throws kind of religious rights. They, they want to add to the civil rights uh, some things and, and throw away uh, uh, religious freedom. So that if you, um, as, for example, if I didn't want a transgender teaching our youth or someone who was very pro something that was anti-biblical, that would now be illegal. Yeah. Uh, craziness. So I know Christians who have said, well, I love Jesus, but I don't really care about all those abortions. I don't care about the pro this and everything that they're doing against God. I just don't like Trump's personality, so we're going to go with this. They compromised their convictions so that they could vote. Wow. That seems to be kind of like a little, you say, well, how could this ever happen? Oh, pastor, you compromised your convictions for that? Uh, but, but just so you know, so I can get the other side to hate me too, I know Christians who follow Trump like he's some sort of Messiah. Just to be honest with you, now I don't want to get, so I'm going to get both of you guys mad at me. Uh, I, you know, listen, I agree with a lot of Trump's policies, but let's just say as a person, he doesn't always say and do things that I would say are honoring to the Lord at all. And I know Christians who have compromised. Oh, it doesn't matter what he says. It doesn't matter what he does. And that's not okay. But, but we're going to follow him anyway, even if what he says is wrong. That's ridiculous. You should never follow any man. You should follow Jesus Christ. In fact, the Bible says, follow me. Actually, would you mind putting your... Thanks. The Bible says, follow me as I what? Follow Christ. Right. So you guys can follow me as long as or in the areas that you see me following Jesus Christ. Does that make sense? Yeah. If there's areas that I don't, then you have to say, you know, Pastor D, I'm not really in. I don't think your, your attitude's not right there. Yeah, you know, or yeah, I don't think that's right. That's why open, keep those Bibles open. Does that make sense? Be Bereans, the Bible says. See if what I'm saying is true. Okay, because he's going to be a cult of personality. It's going to come in place of Jesus Christ. Just like tons of people follow Jesus, they're going to follow this antichrist. And there's going to be a spiritual power and deception behind it. That you know what? You probably won't recognize. Unless you're really walking with Jesus and you know the word of God. Does that make sense? Okay, here's a few more things. The Antichrist in this verse, in verse 18, you see it right here? This is actually the first time it's ever used, if I remember correctly, in the Bible, is right here in 1 John. In fact, the only times Antichrist is used, it's, it's five times, right, uh, in these four verses. All right? So... Uh, it's used in 1 John chapter 2, verse 18 here, verse 22, uh, 1 John chapter 4, verse 3, and also 2 John, oh, it is 2 John, yeah, 1, 7. But even though it's infrequent that the Antichrist is, is it's being used, okay, it, it's still uh, an important one. And it goes by other names in the Bible. So in the Bible, the Antichrist goes by many titles, okay? So when he exposes himself, all right, just as it creates that abomination that causes desolation, okay? The Antichrist goes by many titles in the Bible. He is called the little horn and the mouth that speaks great things in Daniel chapter 7, verse 8. Listen, we went through the entire book of Daniel together just a couple years ago, okay? If you haven't heard that, you can find it on the website. It's not on video, it's on audio at, at homefellowshipchurch.com. We're having a little bit of problem getting people on the phone because we just transferred over our website, but you can look at that. Um, he's called, he is the fierce looking king and a master of intrigue. Daniel chapter 8, verse 23. He's called the prince that shall come in Daniel chapter 9, verse 26. He is the king that shall do as he wills and exalt and magnify himself in Daniel chapter 11, verses 36 to 45. He's also mentioned in Daniel, Daniel 12, 11 and Matthew 24, 15. Do you want me to do it? Um, yeah, I'll just keep going. 
He is also called the one who comes in his own name in John 5, 43. And lastly, he's called the son of perdition. And that just, uh, the man of sin and the lawless one in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3. And also chapter 2, verse 8. So, and that son of perdition means, perdition just means like the punishment, like eternal punishment. So he's the son of of eternal damnation or eternal punishment. That's who this Antichrist is going to be. Okay? He's also mentioned, by the way, I didn't say this, but he's also spoken about in Revelation 13, 16, and 19. And, and I'm just going to read you one quick thing from Revelation 13. I won't make it very long because uh, there's so much. But I'll just read in Revelation chapter... 13, starting in verse 14. Because of the signs he was given power to do on behalf of the first beast, he deceived, deceived the inhabitants of the earth. And he ordered them eventually, this is eventually, to set up an image in honor of the beast who was wounded by the sword and yet lived. He will give power to that beast. Excuse me, he, will give, <laughs> he was given power to give breath to the image of the first beast so that it could speak and cause all who refuse to worship the image to be killed. And in verse 16, it says, He also forced everyone, small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive the mark on the right hand or the forehead so that no one could buy or sell unless he had that mark by which is the name of the beast or the number of his name. This calls for wisdom. If anyone has any insight, let them calculate the number, that man's number, it's, it's 666. So, okay, now here's what we can do. Here's what I don't want you to do. Um, uh, people have been hunting antichrists for a long time, okay? And they, they lose their focus. They spend all their times, end time looking for this, end time looking for that, end time looking for this. It, who's the person? Who's the Antichrist? What's the number? And they waste all their times and their life looking at what, who, who is it, who is it, is this one, this one? How about instead of taking all that time and looking at the counterfeit, you take all that time, that YouTube time, that brain time, that reading time, and you look at your Bible and look at the real Christ. Yes. Because when you see the real Christ and you get to know him and understand him, let me tell you what, the counterfeits become a lot clearer to you. Does that make sense? Does anybody have, we've been giving time with God, so I didn't bring any today. Does anybody have their time with God devotional with them by any chance? Oh, I had it with me and I forgot it. Kicked myself. Okay. Um, Billy Graham, uh, it's on page 569 in that time with God, by the way. And uh, Billy Graham had said that Satan uh, has set himself up in churches and mission organizations and not just in this world, in churches. And he, he doesn't look like what we think. He's the counterfeit. He's a deceiver. He's a master of intrigue. You're not going to... And, and, and he says, the, the best way to do this, like they study counterfeit bills, like the Secret Service used to study bills, they would be able to recognize a counterfeit bill, not by looking at the counterfeit, the various types of counterfeit bills. They'd recognize a counterfeit bill because they would really study the real thing. Does that make sense? And Jesus wants you to really study the real thing so you'll know. It will be clear to you. It won't be a surprise at all. Okay? And when it comes to numerical stuff, I just want to, I, I got to tap on some of this stuff because it, it drives me bananas after years in the ministry. Um, folk, the 666 number has been anywhere from Emperor Nero in, in, back in John's day all the way to Barney. <laughs> The dinosaur. <laughs> and our, you, you guys remember the cute purple dinosaur? I love you. Remember? Uh, you love me. I love you. I'd like to eat you in a stew. No. Um, uh, whatever that little song was. You guys know what I'm talking about. The children, right? I'm not kidding you. You think I... Yeah, yeah. Barney is the Antichrist. You want to know how? You guys want to know how Barney came? I heard, I heard a friend of mine say this, and I thought, no way. I said... Nobody would be that. Can I tell you what? People are that silly. They're that. Listen, here, here we go. Well, of course, he's, I won't, he's purple. But here, here's how we get there. You guys want to know or do you want me to skip it? 
Okay, okay. This is this is for real now. Okay, just ready. Here's the mathematical proof. I'm kidding, of course. Proof, though, that Barney is the Antichrist. Okay, step one. The Romans had no letter U, so they used V instead for printing. Therefore, the Roman representation for Barney would be cute purple dinosaur with a V instead of the U. Make sense? Step two, you take that cute purple dinosaur with the Vs in it, and by extracting the Roman numerals, you have C, V, V, L, D, I, V. The decimal equivalent to that, those Roman numerals, will be 100, 5, 5, 50, 515. Now, if you add all those together, it produces 666. 666 is the number of the beast. Barney is the Antichrist. Wow. That's, that's cool. Now, now listen, I, I say this, and, and I'm telling you, if you try hard enough, all these prophets, you're going to see everybody as the Antichrist. People are getting paid for this. Right. But I'm telling you, this is on the internet. Everybody, I can't tell you the amount of people who have sent me YouTube videos. I, I don't want to see that. Listen, I know what the real Christ looks like, so I'm going to be able to tell what the Antichrist looks like. Does that make sense? Yes. Well, listen, every, from popes to superstars to presidents to world leaders, you know, Napoleon, Hitler, this guy, that guy. Listen, every president in the United States, even recently, I had somebody, do you think Trump is the Antichrist? And I, and I had to go, I had to go back, do you think? And, and years before that, it was, do you think Obama's the Antichrist? You know, and then if you're here years before that, it was Bush because he started that world. He was going to be end the mother of all battles. And it was that, and then it was Clinton. And then it was his father, Bush. And then it was Ronald Reagan. I think the only president that I remember was maybe Gerald Ford. And, and that's he was a nice person. He was just too clumsy. And there's no way he could have been the Antichrist because he was just. <laughs> but he was about the only president that somebody didn't think he was the Antichrist. I guess the point that I'm trying to say is wonderful, loving Christians have spent tons of time wasting their life and their time seeking all these things instead of just getting into the word of God which will strengthen you for all eternity. Heaven and earth will pass away. His word will never pass away. Does that make sense? Capish? Now listen, and here's the thing. If you've believed some of these things, I want you to know I'm not making fun of you. If you are, if you like Trump, if you like Biden, I, the reason I'm saying these things is because I want everybody to know equally that we're not to follow any man, we're to follow Jesus Christ. His heart, his word, his spirit. Does that make sense to everybody? I'm not downing anybody. Maybe you've been duped into thinking this one is or that one is. In a sense, you know, Maybe the Lord showed you and not to do that anymore. Not to waste your time. You focus your time on Jesus. Amen? Okay. Chris, could you do me a favor? Thanks. Would you give this? I don't know how to turn it on. But if you turn it on and hand it to uh, that young man. Actually, I should say that older man. One year old. So if, if I'm understanding what you're saying and we spend our time in the Bible, investigating who Jesus Christ is. Mm -hmm. Chapter then, by chapter, verse by verse. Chapter by chapter, yes. verse by verse. Yes. Then anything else that is flashy or sharp or very attractive or whatever mm -hmm. draws me to something other than Christ. Right. A good Christian explanation even. Uh, folks that are, I think this is, yeah. Then that's an antichrist. Not the antichrist, but an antichrist. That's what we'll get to next. Fair enough. In your Bible, it says in verse 18 here, dear, oh my goodness, I got to speed up. Dear children, this is the last hour and you've heard that the antichrist is coming, future. And it says, and even now, many antichrists have come. This is how we know it's the last hour. Okay, so the Bible says this, Mark, and for everybody else. Do not believe everyone. It says this in 1 John chapter 4, verse 1. Do not believe everyone who claims to speak by the Spirit. You must test them to see if the Spirit they have comes from God. For there are many false prophets in the world. And what's the best way that we can test what anybody says? 
everybody holding up their Bible. Right. Will you read it? Will you take time? Will I take time? Every day. Make sense? It, when it talks about antichrists, okay, he's talking about those people who are against Jesus Christ. Maybe they're ignorant or maybe they're, I would say, they're even demonically influenced, you know. And Matthew, Jesus said in Matthew chapter 24, he says that false Christs and false prophets will appear and perform, listen to this, folks, Okay, I believe in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. I believe that's for today. Some of you don't. That's okay. I understand that. Um, you're limiting yourself. But anyway, okay. It says, we'll appear and perform great signs and wonders. So listen, if you're, if you're one of those Christians that are just, just all into the gifts, you know, I believe in the gifts of the Holy Spirit are for today. But you know what? If that's what I'm basing my, my faith on, Look at the false Christ and the false prophets are going to perform great signs and wonders. And it says even to deceive, if possible, even the elect. So you can't go off of those things. You have to bring it down. And I hate to be so basic. You have to boil it down to the word of God. What does he say about it? Is it clear? And Jesus is saying, look, I've... I, I, I've told you ahead of time. What, hit the light for one second, Elijah. What do you see about this picture? Okay, tell me what you notice. Is there anybody that noticed anything? The shadow is of a? A wolf. Right. They're not, does that sheep look like a wolf to you? That's how they're going to be. And usually wolves, you can turn it back on. Thank you, Elijah. Usually wolves will try to draw people after themselves. That's a classic. Um, but we'll get to that later. Second Peter chapter 2, verses 1 to 2 says, But there will be false prophets among the people, just as there will be false teachers among you. Wow. Not just false prophets, but false teachers? Pastors, Bible study leaders, people on YouTube? They're all over the place. I have, usually have my wallet with me. Speak to your wallet. It'll be full. And then you tithe 100% and you'll get it back 10 times. Let me tell you, a real pastor is going to feed the flock, not fleece the flock. Amen. So any church that continually talks about money they're either grossly misguided, okay, or they better be careful that they're, <laughs> hear what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. yes. Neely did this years ago. I think it was for our Daniel study. I can't remember now. Miss Neely did this. And I don't know if you can see this picture pretty well. See all the sheep sitting there reading their Bibles? Listen, we used to have pews just like that in here before we got you guys all comfortable. But, you know, uh, and they're reading their Bibles. And if you look for that one, the little wolf in the sheep's clothing, Jesus said in Matthew 7, 15 to 16, this is in the Living Bible, beware of false teachers who come disguised as harmless sheep, but are wolves and will tear you apart. You can detect them by the way they act just as you can identify them by their fruit. Are they showing love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, right? Paul even said, man, he said, he says this, he said in Acts chapter 20, verse nine, he said, I know that after I leave, savage wolves are gonna come in among the flock. It will come in among you and not spare the flock. They're being sent to do that. Yeah. They want to cause division. They don't want you to be at a good Bible teaching church, whether it's this one or another one. They don't want you to be, they want to cause division. They want you to be really ticked off at you. <laughs> they want you to be really ticked off at her. They want you to be really ticked off at the friends. You hear what I'm saying? They want you to be really mad at me. 
or Neely or Pastor Gary because he didn't wear his eye patch. I don't know. Whatever the reason. <laughs> he didn't bring barbecue to the men's meeting. So listen, so when there's an opportunity, listen, to join the prayer group if you can, and I realize some of you can, Sunday mornings, why don't you come and see miracles performed? Why don't you just join us? Yeah, it's out of your comfort zone. So what? Why don't you come to the women's group? Natalie. Okay, they're going to even serve you food. And if you don't have a babysitter, we'll be happy to try to help provide finances for that. How can you do that? Being Because we love you and we don't want you to miss it if you feel the words leading you. Come to the men's group. Go through verse by verse with Pastor Gary. I love it. There was a time when I came to support Pastor Gary. Now he's become such a good teacher. I just enjoy being there. I'm getting just, I'm chowing down on pizza and, and also the word of God. Look, look back in your Bibles with me. It says that, uh, verse 19, they went out from us, but they did not really belong to us, okay? They would have remained with us, but their going showed that none of them belonged to us. Okay, so they're going to come from without, right? Savage wolves, but they're also going to be come from within. People are going to want to pull people after themselves. <laughs> the Bible says this in Acts chapter 20, verse 30 and 31. He says, even from your own number, that's the us, right? Even from your own number, men will arise, and that could be men or women, will arise and distort the truth in order to what? Draw away disciples after themselves. Here's what the Bible says. So be on guard. Watch out. Look out. Remember that for three years, Paul is saying to these Christians, I never stopped warning each of you night and day with tears. And I warn you the same way. So hear me in Jesus' name. There are plenty of churches that are putting out those carrots for you. They make it look so fantastic. Look what they have. Look what they... Don't listen. And when it says us in verse 19, he's talking about the church, right? The body of Christ. Now, for those of you who don't know, when we talk the church, oh gosh, that text did not transfer over well. Oh, that's a bummer. All right, so we're talking, we can be talking about two things. There's a universal church. Sorry, the text from my PowerPoint to this one, obviously I chose the wrong one. Should have been Calibri. I was. Anyway, when you become a born-again Christian, you become a member of the Universal Church of Christ, right? And the Universal Church is considered the assembly of everyone, past, present, and future, that belongs to Christ's kingdom. Everybody understand that? Okay, but there's also a local church, okay? And once a person is saved, God wants us to belong to a local body. Like in Corinthians, he says that there's different gifts he gives to each one of us, okay? And And... And so once we're saved, we're supposed to go to a local church, okay? And we're to be taught the word of God. We're to come together where we can be taught and learn and grow uh, to love and serve the Lord and serve others. That's what we're here for. So when we're talking about us, when it says this, hit the light, please. When it says in verse 19, they went out from us, but they didn't belong to us. For they had, if they'd belonged to us, they would have remained with us. But their going sh showed that none of them belonged to us. Now, I've had some churches, even in our area, when the people have left their church, the pastor had got up and said, use this verse. They went out from us, but they never really belonged to us. And, and you know what? That church, quite frankly, it's still around, is quite popular because everybody's scared to leave that church. <laughs> that's the truth. They don't say that, but that's why. In fact, uh, I was going to tell you. Uh, let me just say, the initial pastor died, and one of their children uh, came to me and was in tears, and I, I explained this verse to them, because they said that that's what their dad used to do, to keep... Anyway. And she said, I didn't know that it was... It, what he's talking about is the universal body of Christ. In other words, if somebody leaves us and doesn't come back, right? 
then okay, they were never really of us. So if somebody says I'm saved or they get baptized and they get, you know, and then they, they walk away from it, they were never really of us to begin with. Does that make sense? They left the faith, exactly. The universal body of Christ. So, listen, if as a local body, okay, we're not, to, it does say in Hebrews 10.25, this is very true, especially now with COVID and corona. Everybody, I have a hangnail. Oh, I need to stay home, Pastor. Oh, I'm, I, I'm this, I'm that. Listen, I, I, not, I don't want to make it about us, but, you know, how, how do I say this? Uh, Lord, tell me not to say that like that. Okay. Regardless of what is wrong, God wants you in a local fellowship to grow. If you're at home trying to be your own Christian at your own house, and that's all, that's how you like it, or you have a couple friends, that's not what he, he says, let us not le get, neglect our meeting together as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of return is drawing near. Now more than ever, our flesh wants to be apart, right? I don't want to expose myself, Pastor. I don't want... Christians are too much of a hassle, right? Ah, uh, this person, that... That's what the enemy wants. God says, get your butt in here. You got gifts and talents and abilities. We're supposed to, as iron sharpen iron, sharpen one another. Yes, uh, Rebecca. Should I uh, Yes, Chris will hand you the mic. Kind-hearted Chris will hand you the microphone. Go ahead. Um... So what you were just talking about, people, you know, they're Christians, but they don't go to church or they're not in fellowship. Yeah. Um, so I regularly hear them say, I love God. I love Jesus, but I hate religion. Yeah. And then they Me translate too. hating religion uh, yeah. to not going to church or not meeting with other people. And it's, it's a, like a little trap to it keep is. them out of fellowship. But then I'm like, well, what yes. about what the word says about not neglecting the assembly of the saints? And uh, they always kind of just wash over that part. Right. And that's where we have to. I understand what they're saying. L listen, I, if that was up to me, I would just like me, Jesus, Bible, Muffin, maybe my wife on most days, the kids. Yes. Do you know what I'm saying? That's a lot easier that way. Just homeschool, we'll just, but that's not exactly, God wants us around other folks and there's nothing against homeschooling. The, the point that I'm trying to make is we need to learn from one another. So what John isn't saying in verse 19 is, John is not talking about someone who feels led of the Holy Spirit and chooses to go from one good Bible teaching church to another. If somebody wants to leave this church and feels led of the Holy Spirit to do so and go to another good Bible teaching church, do you know what we're gonna do? We're going to pray them off and we're going to wish all God's blessing upon them. That's what we do. Does that make sense? So we're not talking. Pastor Gary, I remember talking to, was talking to somebody one time and, and, they, and they were leaving for some reasons and he felt really compelled by the Lord to talk to them. And he's like, you know what? I just have to ask you. I, I don't feel like you guys are supposed to go. And, and he's like, I, I, I really wrestled with even telling you this. And I was so glad God put it on his heart because I didn't want to do it. Yeah, I felt the same way, but God put it on his heart to go talk to them. And, and they said, you know, did you guys really, do you feel led of the Holy Spirit to go? Can I just ask you that? And, and he said, well, honestly, no. We have to say we, we, we weren't led of the Holy Spirit. So if the Holy Spirit's leading you, by all means, go with our blessing. Does that make sense? We wish you well. We want you just to grow wherever God wants you. However, make sure it's the Lord and not in our thinking or our emotions because that's where I've watched him trick many people. Reeling them in like a fish on a hook on a line. You aren't hearing the truth. Huh? Hearing the truth. You don't want to hear the truth about stuff. Absolutely. Yes. So we're also not talking about, John's not talking about Christians who are wrestling with doubts or maybe they've backslid a little bit for a season or, or they've stumbled with sin or they've strayed for a season. He's not talking about that. Again, he's talking about those who leave the global community at church. You, you know the type of people that said, you know, I'm sick of churches. They're all a bunch of hypocrites and, and I don't need this anyway, right? Am I right? And they leave 
not just a church, but they leave any kind of church. And we can fairly say that that person doesn't appear to be a Christian by their appearance. And they demonstrate that they never really were. They're leaving the faith. You know, only God knows for sure. You know, but it looks like they weren't really trusting Jesus to begin with. And that says, and then if they were, the common ground of Jesus Christ and his word says, and what his word says would override any other difficulty they might have with dealing with other Christians. God wants you together, so get over yourself. Based on the word. Does that make sense? I, I, I love what David Guzik said here. He's a friend that we went to uh, uh, on the Footsteps of the Apostle Paul tour with. He said, a healthy church is going to purge itself of poisons. He said, the compromising or the false Christian will not feel comfortable settling down roots in a healthy church. He will either get right with God or he'll leave. And we've seen that many times. People want to hear what they want to hear. Listen, all you guys do there is preach the word. When I counsel you, all you do is you give me the Bible. Well, what do you want me to do? Sing to you? Do you know what I'm saying? I don't... I, I don't... What, Gary can tell jokes, I guess. I don't... That's what Gary noticed. Do, do you know what I'm saying? But that's true. When you teach the word, people don't like it, and they're going to leave. I'm afraid to even ask, Pastor Gary, how, uh, how long have I been teaching? You have got to be kidding me. Keep going. Okay, l l listen. Um, <sighs> Jesus. Okay, give me a couple more minutes. I, I, I did pray. I, I, I'll never get through this, the whole thing. So I'm just going to give you a couple more verses. Here's what the Bible says in 1 John 2.20. You have an anointing from the Holy One. And all of you know the truth. He's speaking to Christians, okay? So Listen. God is saying <laughs> that you have been anointed. In the Greek, that word is chrisma. You might have heard of it. Okay, it, it, some of your Bibles might say unction or anointing. In the Old Testament, that unction or that anointing was related to the Holy Spirit. His appointment, his blessing, his protection, his empowerment. In the Old Testament, they would anoint prophets. Elijah anointed Elisha the prophet with a double portion of his power. Um, uh, God told Moses to anoint Aaron in Exodus 28, 14 as a priest for a special appointment, a special protection. In Kings, you remember the prophet Samuel came and anointed David the prophet, right? I mean, David the prophet. David, right? The king of Israel uh, with blessing and protection and power. You guys remember that, right? Yeah. And Jesus is the same way. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. He said, he has anointed me. That's actually, that's what Messiah means, anointed one. To preach the gospel to the poor. He has set me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and to recover of sight to the blind. To set at liberty them that are bruised in Luke 4.18. Here's the thing. And you know, Acts 10.38 says, that God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit. And when that power came upon him, Jesus went around doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. And in that same way, Jesus told us, you and me, his disciples, but you will receive dunamis power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and all to the ends of the earth. So listen, when you're saved, what happens, the Holy Spirit lives within in you, when you receive the truth of God's word, when you receive that anointing, right, that, of the Holy Spirit, when you get saved, when you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, your thinking starts to change. You start wanting to have fellowship with other believers. You start wanting to read the word because you want to know. You start wanting to serve. Are, are you those things? Do you want to know the Lord? Do you want to know his word? Do you want to serve? If not, maybe something's wrong. Ask the Lord, please. Help me, Lord. In, in fact, it says... I'll leave it. I mean, okay, the Lord's telling me to stop it right here. Okay, so the bottom line is, when we're saved, the Holy Spirit comes to live inside you. A supernatural... It doesn't mean you just come to church. It means God is saying, I want to now rewire your brain 
and your heart to start seeking the things that are about me. Does that make sense to you? It's not of you or of works. It's a work of God. And I remember Dana saying this one time. I remember him saying this to me. He said, the biggest miracle that you could ever have is a life that's been changed by God. That's the biggest miracle. Amen, brother? <coughs> you have an anointing from the Holy One. God has said, I've appointed you the oil of the Holy Spirit. And I want you to be my whatever you want to say prophet, priest of your home, king. You know what I'm saying? I want you to, to be my people. And I've anointed you. And I'm going to teach you all things by the power of the Holy Spirit. There's a lot more to be said, and I've got a lot more slides. But I think the Lord is saying, wrap it up. So uh, we'll finish this out next week. But God's Holy Spirit says in John 14 that he's going to guide you into all truth as you trust in him. He's going to reveal things to you, whether it be through a Bible study or through a pastor or through the reading of the word or however, moody radio or something. On the, He's going to speak and you're, by the power of the Holy Spirit, you're going to be able to, to discern right from wrong, good from bad. Sometimes you'll even know in, intuitively, supernaturally. Oh, wait a minute, something's just wrong here. When I first got saved, I went to some churches, and they had things, they were some holy rollers. And let me tell you, I didn't know nothing. And the, the spirit, my Holy Spirit inside of me would just scream out to me. I wouldn't even, I would, be, this is so wrong. Get out, get out. And I'm like, I'm hearing this in my head and it all sounded nice to me. Everybody's happy. There's little lights and lasers and and, and and now looking back, now I understand what they were saying from the front and it wasn't right or it was the wrong heart attitude. I didn't even know but God's Holy Spirit was so faithful to guide me where I needed to be. And he's really faithful to guide you where you need to be if you're willing are you willing, brothers and sisters, are you willing to be led by the Holy Spirit and to be trained up by the Word of God? If so, can I ask you, please, humble yourself before the Lord and ask Him to do whatever it takes in your life to train you, to teach you, to be able to recognize good from evil, <laughs> Christ from Antichrist in a darkening world. Amen? Amen. Amen? Let's pray, okay? Father God, I want to say thank you from every single person that's here. Bless them. Encourage them. Strengthen them in the name of Jesus, Lord. We need you now more than ever, Amen. Lord God. As the darkness comes in and rationale seems to be going out the window, Lord, let your truth be a firm foundation for us. Let us, let it not, let us not be taking it in a self-righteous way, but just in a humble, standing firm kind of way. We're not going to be movable from this spot because we trust in you, Lord God. We love you. We bless you. And we pray your blessing upon your people. Lord, bring more into your kingdom. And help those who are in your kingdom to serve you and others more than they ever have before. To seek your word and your heart by your Holy Spirit. We ask these things in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. amen and amen and amen. God bless you guys. Have a great week in Jesus' name. You as well. <laughs>